Welcome students, Mr. Cohen here. Uh, that's not me, that's Boris actually. That's the dog you've heard me mentioning before. I had him for nearly 15 years. And here he is on Hatteras Island in North Carolina. That's the Outer Banks. Some of you might have been there. And sometimes we go to a place called Avon there. Every other year we go there to meet friends. And when we used to take Boris there, he um, would entertain us chasing the crabs. And the crabs would chase him. And they'd go back and forth. And everybody would be laughing on the beach because he'd be so fascinated with the crabs. And they'd try and chase him away and he'd go back and forth. So here he is um, on the beach at Hatteras. In fact, let's see, I think we've got another picture of him. There you can see how close he would get and the crab would have a go at him too. And uh, as soon as the crab put his claws up, he'd be backing away and then he'd chase him. We would go back and forth. And uh, I used to bring him in on the last day of school as well until it got too hot and he got too old. Now we have Pablo. And Pablo's got his own personality too. Oops, let's get rid of that. Okay, so what we're going to be doing today. Um, well, I am actually going to show you an example that students finished on their timeline. They did a very neat job. There were some things that you could change that you don't need to do. And uh, so I'm going to show you their work. Okay, so here we see the work of two students. It's very neat creative with images and so on and what they did um, they've actually created two timelines but you don't need to do that because we're making a multi-tiered timeline and what do I mean by that well I mean <laughs> multiple things would be going on uh, on the time on one timeline and when I say multiple things I mean in this case it's multiple students having events in their own lives but going across a timeline, one timeline. So Alyssa and, and Jimena did a great job here. What they could have done is they simply could have put the year from 2008 up to 2020, well, and, and into 2020, and then simply put, so for example, Alyssa could have put uh, 2008 over here, and that was when she was born, Two 2009, we could have had an arrow down to here before 2010. Met my best friend in 2009 and put that onto this timeline. 2012 could have gone in there. 2013 in there. And you can see it could get a little bit crowded, you know, and that's where we have to kind of juggle around with those lines. I did a scribble line. That was one way of getting around it. Or the curve line. You can use the curve lines in here. That's a choice too. Um, so let me just make that a bit bigger. So for ex and also for example, 2015 that could have gone right on that line there. So and at the same time, on this side of the line is what Jimena would put, and it would point from this side. So you've got two. Um, sources of historical events. So you've got one source is Alyssa's life and the other source is Jimena's life. So you've got a multiple tier on this one timeline. Um, they've done a really nice job of, of including images that do go with what's happening in the description. So started dance. This is Alyssa starting dance 2012. By the way, Alyssa, my friend, she's one of the dance professors at OSU. I'll be meeting them this weekend. So I'll tell her that we have a dance student in my class. Um, so um, the, and ladies, I'm, I'm glad you didn't object to me sharing this. This is great, okay? And uh, I'm really pleased for your grandma as well, Jimena, that's great. Um, New York, she went to New York, right? Wow, what a great city, right? What a great city. Um, so students, when you ask uh, me these questions that I've gone over with you several times uh, with you on in the videos and so on, here is an example for you. You simply could create a line like this. I would start, let's see, with your first event. So this 2008 could have gone over here. 
and these the lines could come down to here 2009 would come to this area just before 2010 2012 and so on okay so and if there's four of you then you're going to have to juggle the lines in between um, if there's six people in the group I recommend two groups of three students have been continuously asking how do I contact my group well I've mentioned this in videos I've mentioned it in emails you need to have contributed to the discussion place your email in there and that discussion is where you can actually discuss okay you can discuss who's going to be in which group and what their emails are so that you can then share emails and when you've done that you can then share the document one person opens the document names it possibly multi-tiered timeline project just like these ladies called it multi-tiered timelines project they shared it with one another and then they can get to work on it okay videos on how you do this have been shared with you already uh, let me think what other questions have I been asked all the questions are answered in the videos and in my notes and in also the emails have been sent in to you okay like I said these ladies have done a great job what I would have done though is I would have just had one line and have this information on one side of the line for Alyssa and on this side of the line uh, Jimena would have put her information so you just have the one line starting at the first date of someone's event and then ending um, with the last event I'd keep it in years of like you know every 10 years like 2000 or sorry every one year 2008 then 9 and 10 and so on and then you can put these bits of information in between roughly you know if it was halfway between 2000 and 2010 and 2000 and, and uh, 11 well that would probably be the middle of the, that year um, just be careful with numbering these accurately too okay so um, if you've got two events you could uh, simply put them um, you could put them both in the same box that's another option too okay students so that's just a quick review of the things that you need to do for that project by uh, let's see by Wednesday the next thing I'd like you to do I've already assigned this and this is Ed Puzzle and it's timelines for kids and if you've still not been in Ed Puzzle you didn't set up an account you will need to email me you will need to email me because uh, nearly all of you have an Edpuzzle account for your class and you'd simply go in there to Edpuzzle I recommend that you bookmark it you've got this timelines for kids assignment to do and what you can do is you can have more than one attempt at this you can listen to the video uh, should I say you can listen to the video go back in the video review it before you answer the questions so that is something that you can do actually um, right after this class and it uh, will help you even with your own timelines okay this is not multi-tier timelines this is just a single timeline these are single timelines examples okay um, so you've got more than enough information there to keep you going and I wish you all the best kids okay so Work on the timelines in Edpuzzle and projects are due on Wednesday. Thank you and enjoy your weekend, students. Bye for now. From me and from Pablo and my new adopted dog, Cecil. Thank you.